Good morning, and welcome to worship on this fourth Sunday after Pentecost. My name is Pastor Seth Novak, and on behalf of the entire community of Anus Day Lutheran Church, I'd like to thank you for being a part of worship this morning. Our building may be closed, but the church is still open. Our worship bulletin with the order of service can be downloaded from the link in the video description below. If you haven't yet, I'll invite you to take a moment to download that now so you can follow along. Today is also the day on which we commemorate Irenaeus, Bishop of Leon. He was born in what's now Turkey in the middle of the second century. Later, he immigrated to Gaul in present-day France and became an elder in the Greek-speaking church there in Lyon, and eventually the bishop. Irenaeus was described as the church's first systematic theologian. As bishop, he was known for his opposition to heresies that were threatening uh, to alter Christian beliefs. Some of his writings on the subject are still around today. He was also one of the influential voices that helped shape which books were included in our Bible. There were many Gospels being circulated at the time of Irenaeus, but he advocated for the use of just four, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So we remember that as we gather from our many different homes today, uh, we gather with Irenaeus and all the community, of, uh, all the great cloud of witnesses. Before we begin our worship today, we'd like to share prayer concerns from our community. Uh, today we remember in prayer Deb, Debbie Snowden's mom, Pat, who's recovering from rotator cuff surgery, and also Joanna Powers, who fell and broke both her ankles this last week. Uh, we hold them and uh, all the others uh, whose names are on our hearts in prayer today. I'll invite you to follow along with your worship bulletin as we begin. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you direct our lives by your grace, and your words of justice and mercy reshape our world. Mold us into a people who welcome your word and serve one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. This morning's reading is from Jeremiah chapter 28, verses 5 to 9. In that same year, at the beginning of the reign of King Zedekiah of Judah, in the fifth month of the fourth year, the prophet Hananiah, son of Azur from Gibeon, spoke to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon, 
within two years, I will bring back to this place all the vessels of the Lord's house, which King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon took away from this place and carried to Babylon. I will also bring back to this place King Jeconiah, son of Jehoiakim of Judah, and all the exiles from Judah who went to Babylon, says the Lord, for I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to the prophet Hananiah, in the presence of the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord, and the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen. May the Lord do so. May the Lord fulfill the words that you have prophesied and bring back to this place from Babylon the vessels of the house of the Lord and all the exiles. But listen now to this word that I speak in your hearing and in the hearing of all the people. The prophets who preceded you and me from ancient times prophesied war, famine, and pestilence against many countries and great kingdoms. As for the prophet who prophesies peace, when the word of that prophet comes true, then it will be known that the Lord has truly sent the prophet. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The gospel this morning comes from the book of Matthew in the 10th chapter. Jesus said to the 12, whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteous. And whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. A church in Portland, Oregon offers this welcome statement on their website. We extend a special welcome to those who are single, married, divorced, widow, gay, straight, filthy rich, dirt poor, crying newborns, broken hearted, or in need of a safe place. We welcome you if you can sing like Boselli or if you can't carry a tune in a bucket. You're welcome here if you're just browsing, or just woke up, or just got out of jail. We extend a special welcome to those who are over 60 but not grown up yet, to teenagers who are growing up too fast. We welcome soccer moms, NASCAR dads, latte sippers, vegetarians, and junk food eaters. We welcome you if you're having problems or you're down in the dumps, or if you don't like organized religion. If you blew your offering money at the casino, you're welcome here. We offer a special welcome to those who think the earth is flat, work too hard, don't work, can't spell, or are here because grandma is in town and wanted to come to church. We offer a special welcome to those who could use prayer right now had religion shoved down your throat as a kid, or got lost in traffic and ended up here by mistake. We welcome tourists, seekers and doubters, bleeding hearts, and you. Welcoming and hospitality is an important part of our faith. In this morning's gospel reading, Jesus uses the word welcome six times in two sentences. As a church, we spend a lot of time thinking about hospitality. We make sure our buildings are easily accessible by building wheelchair ramps and by installing listening systems. We wear name tags, have greeters at our front door, and serve fair trade coffee at coffee hour. We want everyone to feel welcome and accepted in our worship spaces. Then 2020 happened. We suddenly find ourselves in the middle of a worldwide pandemic. Our buildings are closed. The church has been deployed. We are no longer welcoming people into our buildings. We're out on the front lines. We are learning new ways of welcoming and reflecting the love of God 
and Christ into our communities and the world. We are learning again what it means to practice radical hospitality. This pandemic has made glaringly obvious the inequalities and inequities and injustices that exist in our society. These are often due to one's ethnicity, gender, economic status, or sexual orientation. We may despair at how some in power seem to consider the lives of some of our neighbors to be disposable. We may feel overwhelmed by the systemic sin that surrounds us and helpless to change it. In today's gospel reading, Jesus says, whoever gives even a cold cup of water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. Giving a cold drink of water sounds simple enough, but simple is not always easy. A geologist named Scott Warren knows just how difficult it can be. Scott lives out his faith by volunteering for a small organization called No Mas Muertes, No More Deaths. The goal of this organization is simply to prevent migrants from dying in the desert by leaving food and jugs of water along the remote desert trails. The Sonoran Desert of Arizona is a dangerous stretch of wilderness. Between 1999 and 2018, more than 3,000 migrants have died from exposure and dehydration. In 2017, Scott was arrested by Border Patrol agents and charged with three felony accounts for his humanitarian efforts. He faced the possibility of 22 years in prison for providing cold cups of water. Thankfully, this story has a happy ending. Scott was acquitted of the charges after just two hours of jury deliberation. This kind of radical hospitality is challenging and holy work. Ultimately, this work is about love. It's about the love of an awesome God who humbled himself to come down to us in our broken, sinful world to be beaten, mocked, and killed so that we may be forgiven and made whole. It is this love that enables us to go out into the world to serve our neighbors and share God's love with those whom the Holy Spirit puts in our path. Because God first loved us, he welcomed us in spite of our flaws. And because of the Holy Spirit poured in into us at our baptism, we are able to welcome and acknowledge others as beloved children of God. One day, a young woman was walking home from work when she saw a little girl standing on a street corner begging. The little girl's clothes were paper thin and dirty. Her hair was matted and unclean, and her cheeks were red from the cold. The woman dropped a few coins into the begging bowl, gave the girl a smile, and walked on. As she walked, she started to feel guilty. How could she go home to her warm house with its full pantry and well-supplied wardrobe while this little girl shivered on the street? The young woman also began to feel angry with God. She let her feelings be known in a prayer of protest. God, how can you let these sorts of things happen? Why don't you do something to help this girl? And then, to her surprise, God answered. He said, I did do something. I created you. There are many different kinds of deserts and many different ways to provide a cold cup of water to those in need. We are all called to serve in different ways, and none of us can change the world by ourselves. Mother Teresa once said, we can do small things with great love. These small gifts of hospitality are like a pebble thrown into a pond. The ripples start small and grow and spread, and we will never know where they end up. In closing, I would like to share with you the lyrics to a song sung by the so Sojourners community. Is there room in this city for the lowly and poor? Is there room in this city for the homeless and their friends? Is there room in this city for the broken little ones? Well, come in, Jesus child. 
We want to make some room. Amen. We are called into unity with one another and with the whole creation. So let us pray today for our shared world. After each of the petition, would you respond then with the phrase, your mercy is great. God of companionship, encourage our relationships with our brothers and sisters in Christ. Bless our conversations, shape our shared future, and give us hearts eager to join with one another in justice and equality. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God of abundance, you make your creation thrive and grow and provide all that we need. Inspire us to care for our environment and be attuned to where the earth is crying out this day also. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God of mercy, your grace is poured out for all. Inspire authorities, judges, and politicians to act with justice and compassion. Teach us to overcome fear with hope, to meet hate with love, and to welcome one another as we would welcome you. Hear us, O God. O oh God of care, accompany all who are in deepest need. Give us hope as we live in the fear of this pandemic. Comfort those who are sick, lonely, or abandoned. Especially the, this day, we pray for those in the silence of our hearts. We pray especially also for Chris Witt, Joanna Powers, and for Pat. We pray that you would strengthen those who then are also in prison or awaiting trial. Renew the spirits of all who call upon you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God of love, you promise to be with all who are persecuted for your sake. <coughs> Guide all who speak your word of justice. Console any who are tormented or targeted for being who they are. We pray especially for victims of racism, homophobia, and transphobia, and those who are persecuted or who are cast out of their homes for their sexual identity. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. O God of life, 
You gather in your embrace all who have died, including Irenaeus, Bishop of Lyon, for whom we give thanks today. Keep us steadfast in our faith and renew our trust in your promise. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O God, and those too deep for words, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. As we prepare the elements for Holy Communion in our homes, I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you who has contributed to the ministry of On You Stay in this time with your tithes and offerings. Thanks to your generosity, the ministry of On You Stay continues even as the building has been closed. We've actually been able to expand what we've been doing and connect with new people because of these gifts. If you'd like to join me in helping this ministry continue to grow, you can follow the link in the video description below to donate your gift now. Even though we cannot gather physically, we can still gather our gifts together to do God's work.
Let us pray. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, we give you thanks for your life-sustaining love with which you have always guided us. When the flood came, you provided an ark. When the plagues came, you provided refuge. When the evening came, you provided a pillar of fire. When the exile came, you provided a new song. Day after day after day, your love has remained steadfast. Day after day after day. In your boundless love, you provided for us a savior, Jesus Christ, who healed the sick, gave strength to the weak, restored hope to the desolate, and proclaimed the good news of your coming reign of justice and peace. Day after day after day, he laid down his life for us. Day after day after day. On the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. When he had given thanks, he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In the midst of our fear, in the midst of our anxiety, in the midst of our longing, in the midst of our impatience, day after day after day, we pray for Christ to come among us again. Day after day after day. Come, Lord Christ, heal us, strengthen us, give us hope. Let us hear and proclaim good news. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, with this bread and cup, the body and blood of Christ, unite us with all who gather at this table. Unite us across space and time, across social distance and across social divides, across party lines and national borders. Day after day after day, bring us together again in your love. Day after day after day. Filled with the breath of God and fed with the body of Christ, raise us to new life in you. Amen. Come, Holy Spirit. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, we praise your name with all our life and breath and strength, together with all your creatures, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. If you are not receiving Holy Communion this morning, receive this blessing. May the God who welcomes all be with you now and forever. Amen. If you are receiving the sacrament this morning, then hear this promise. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you.
the body and blood of our risen Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. God of the welcome table, in this meal we have feasted on your goodness and have been united by your presence among us. Empower us to go forth sustained by these gifts so that we may share your neighborly love with all. Through Jesus Christ, the giver of abundant life. Amen. May the God who has brought us from death to life fill you with great joy. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless and keep you now and forever. Amen. Once again, I'd like to thank you for being part of this worship service today. If you found today's service meaningful, I invite you to please subscribe to our channel so you can easily find us and to watch and like our other videos. If you've already subscribed, thank you. Uh, when you do that, it helps others find us on YouTube. You can find us here live every Sunday morning at 9.45 a.m., as well as 7 p.m. every Wednesday evening as we pray Vespers using Holden Evening Prayer. Um, we'd like to, uh, we'd also like to invite you to be connected with our other ministries as well. Our normal Wednesday Bible study will not be happening this week because I will be on vacation through Wednesday, uh, but Prayer Shawl Knitting Group is happening uh, via Zoom this week. There is a link to that and other ministries happening at On You Stay on our website, onyoustaylutheran.org. Uh, you can go there and click the button that says Socially Distanced Connecting, and there you can find out how to be involved in everything that happens at On You Stay through the week. Additionally, you can also find there a link to serve253.com. This is a website where you can volunteer to help your neighbors in the Gig Harbor and Tacoma area during this time of pandemic by delivering meals or helping at uh, one of the food banks, one of the local food banks, or donating to the Harbor Hope Center, uh, as well as many other opportunities to serve. If you're looking for a way to help your neighbors in need, please visit the website and see whether you can participate uh, either in person or from home. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Amen. I invite you to share that peace with one another with a phone call or a text or an email, or you can even uh, send the link to this worship service so that you can worship with somebody you care about. God bless you in your week.